is uh, what is our agenda is uh, we need to have something like this and we're going to implement the same type of design in the um, vf page so why vf page is something we need to understand uh, what is the pre-existing technology or uh, something we had in the salesforce um, futurely if you wanted to you know, some some logic which an existing company has written a logic on the some vf pages how do we understand so so we were understanding about in the last class um, onto the few things, which is like a brief pin control pages, controllers. So it, it lacks like a model view controller. I send its uh, visual force as a page centric development. So when I said as a page centric development, you how do you navigate from one page to another page? And the uh, redirections happens, whether you whether you send it to some other page or to stand there only, or uh, well, you move on to the next page, what are things that you carry and what is the end uh, results that you want to show. Just like any form filling uh, application that you see, uh, you just move, you, the moment you try to fill the content, you just move to the next page. For example, um, so lately if you have uh, known about Naukri websites in India, uh, generally what we do is we fill the form or file well the registration that you do. Or a sales, uh, a Google blogger when you wanted to self-register yourself, so they have step one, step two, and step three. So you give your personal information and the next your additional information you're gonna give it and then you say sign up. Uh, so this is all the, you know, where you see uh, uh, pages are used and one page from the page navigation happens and posts, you sign up successfully, we land it to uh, some page and then you show some content there and each and every actions that you click on it, it has some uh, derivatives go from one page to another page. So majority of this whole bunch of things, um, were implemented in a website type of uh, concepts where visual forces pre uh, predominantly used there. And um, so again, when, when the aura came in picture, so we all moved to the lightning experience. So for lightning experience, what is the uh, development that is required? Then again, we adapted to that. Still visual force were able to uh, st still show into the um, lightning experience. And of course, still in LWC also we can, um, what are the lightning experience type? So we, VFP still can be used in the lightning experience. But why we don't use and uh, what are the ch challenges we have is this all page centric where LWC and other stuff are, they become SPM, application centric and moreover, it's a single page applications. You you try to move within directions of one component or other components you can move. But whereas a page centric applications, you cannot move between a component component. It is just like a page and other page you move it. So that's the major difference we have. And Yes, of course, you wanted to render only this particular page. Yes, of course, that is also possible. But uh, the loading context and uh, the performance is comparative to the lightning experience uh, based off LWC order. So we have lags behind. So that is what we want to understand. Now, uh, getting on to the coding wise, if you see, they have standard controller and extension controller. Standard controller has uh, any object, like say custom object, standard object. Using that, you don't write a single logic of code. I mean, Apex logic, control logic, you don't write, but one day the UF thing, UI stuff based things, you write logic there. Let's say save, edit, you use a form, and if, uh, you have a form to write down the values, whatever you wanted it, and then you simply click on a save method by invoking that uh, save command button. That's all, you don't write any code, but just simply you're gonna plot the UI stuff there. So with that help only, we can achieve the form filling or editing a form, only that we can do it. Okay, that is can be achieved by the standard controller. So where you write a tag as uh, this waste. You don't have any extension for that. Just simply, you can see somewhere here. So assume that you don't have this. So only standard controller is equal to the name of the object. It can be object, can be a account object or any standard or custom object which it can be. So then um, this, the command button, whatever we have is, we can have simply save button we can have. Look at this, the command button we have save and cancel. Now why would you written an extension for this control object is, extension means you are purposely writing some Apex logic code in order to override some existing features of the uh, these methods. Like say save and cancel is a, the existing method, but you wanted to override the save method of 
what of the account object we have saved edit delete right when you go to the ui page we have saved edit and delete all the stuff you have assuming that you wanted to override that method so then you need an extension control like this so an extension what you have to do is um let me open the extension So uh, we have written extension class. In extension class, how do we identify an extension class if there is a question? So you need to have one argument constructor this way. Standard uh, Apex pages dot standard controller and the controller will hold the value of that particular record, whatever you're filling in. So then with the help of these context, what of the account object we describe and should be get set method. So now we verify that uh, your number account number is null and uh, we show a message saying that please enter the account number. So we return back there only. We say we don't move around. So we stop there only. So navigation, we stop. So how do you know that the page is navigation there only? Because we have a page reference as a return type. Page reference return type, if you put as return as null, it will hold there only. Okay, let's say an account is passed, a record is inserted, and I wanted to move to a different location. So then give the other page that you wanted to where you wanted to move. If you just simply give slash ID, it will go to the respective ID of the detail page. But we have said that go to respective another VF page and their ID you take it as this. And then redirection I set to be true. What you want to redirect? So the reference, whatever I wanted to create that I'm just moving around. So our record is inserted, you move that to the respective page. So this all would be achievable where we are trying to override this same method. So with the help of this extension, uh, Apex based channel control controller. So what this particular class we called as extension class. So when you see uh, a controller with this, you can easily assume that, okay, that's an extension of someone. And you can see by here to where they're typecasting back to the record. Okay, it's an account class extension you can get to know. So how do you have standard and extension controller? Uh, same way, the custom controller and then and there you can also have an extension controller for them. So what is a custom controller? I would not write any uh, logic here or I cannot specify anything like this standard is equal to account but you have to completely write the logic of uh, the buttons and methods, whatever that you wanted to use it here. So now we're focusing on the custom controller where we don't write anything like this object, but how do we achieve it? Same way, apex colon page, but directly write a controller. We don't write something like standard controller or object something we don't specify at all. So let's, so let's see this, how it works. Um, firstly, we will say apex class, um, let's say account custom controller. I still have any doubt here. Let's just give a quick query of what we have done in the past. Is it in there? Is it in there? Nobody was asking. Um, so you guys have any questions? No, good. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is public account and then account object. I'm just looking into um, account. So you're going to have a get set for this. So I've declared this, that's fine. So what our motive is, uh, the moment you click on a method, I need to carry the few values. Um, Either you can name it as an account object or you can you can name it as a string also that does works. Look at this. I'm gonna 
I'll just declare this may I may not may not be using it. But I wanted to say that what keyword that you're gonna send it here. So public um string and let's say um restor number, which is that the UI that you're gonna give it as restore number. So either you can use a account object or directly you wanted to get the restaurant number and you wanted to check that even that you can do it now let's say um public uh, you want to return something right so public um so the moment you give um a zip code so the moment we try to give a disk zip code yes it should tell me the distance public string Hey, what is our service that is we are requiring? Just a minute. Sending the restaurant number and fetching the related customers records and displaying it, right? Organize. So we're sending the restaurant number and I want to return you the list of associated accounts. Okay. And then I have to give a list of accounts. So that way I'm trying to display you a list of records. Um, so I would say that list of get accounts. Um, so again, list of accounts. Oh, sorry, we don't have these accounts. See, the return type itself is a written uh, list of accounts. So let's say select name, account number, and something we've had in the past, we'll use the same. Yeah, billing city. So these are the fields I'm just querying. Where um, account number is equal to colon and you give this restaurant number here. And you are returning the um, at least sorry from account where account number is called. select all the fields from account object where condition you're giving it True, right? So you're giving a restaurant number and you're trying to get the get accounts of all these records. And then that record would be in a list format. So we may require uh, so this account cannot be single record, it can be a bulk record like this. Get accounts. Um uh, get accounts. Either either we can assign them to be a list of accounts or we can directly use this get accounts method. Mm, I'll tell you how to do it. This also you can do it like this. Still it works. Okay. So now we have tried a custom page where uh, Visual First page we are writing it. And then Visual for says um, fetch fetch account um, letter.
fetch restaurant customers. So this is the VF page that we are having it. That means I'm passing the restaurant number and then associate customers. I'm just getting it. So here, uh, so let's write a um, controller. So controller name is this. Okay, so then what we're trying to do here. So if you wanted to have something like this VF logic, okay, you can get the same. So what we're trying to do is here, we're sending the form and um, but this time we're not dealing anything with this all, let's have it. Um, so we need to have two things here. One is a search button we have to have and then post that you have to have display results. So, First, let's have a simple UI to fire the um, input request. Let's have the simple input request. And I think I have to take up all of the things which is not required. Uh, page block can have, page block section. Um, so I'm gonna say simply here as, um, what is it in the UI got wrong? So I'll just give it a stun number. So just give a stern number, that's it. So where we're gonna give, uh, what is the field that we have given person there? So just a restore number. I think we can directly use them. It's not an input field, it would be input text. So value is equal to, so we have to give something like this. The restaurant number which we find there. So input type text, okay, value is equal to this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we're gonna take it up all of them which is not required and we may have a method to fetch it. So we may have a method to fetch the results. Um, the string that what you're passing is, uh, we need to have a command button to throw them. So let's see. So here I'm gonna say search something or what I've written in the UI, fetch customers, okay. Fetch customers. So cancer is not required as of now. We'll just say fetch customers. So section item, fetch customers. So the fetch customers, what is the method that you have? You, you need to have a method which is trying to hit the uh, a particular value. So fetch customers, what method we have? Is the start number we are sending it? We'll come back here and we'll try to uh, give a system debug. So, what we're actually getting data. So are we getting into this particular method? We'll just firstly print it. We may not have the data to be printed very beginning. Um, and if we have this here. You'll see, because you're focusing on here, to hit the record and the get record we have here. So will it be able to display such records? So let's prove this. So, Restore a number, um, actual restore number to give it. So do we have any some test data here? So 
So let's send this test data. Are we able to print something? Let's see. Return type of XML method must be page one. So it is giving you a real list. Okay. So we are trying to write a method. So that is giving me a list of records. So let's come here. Did it call our method? That's my question. So let's come here. So we're able to get the records. You see this based on the restaurant type number which I passed, I got the respective results, right? So these are the associate records we have. Um, so wherever the um, MCD parent number is this, all that we got it. So, so what is our question is like you send the uh, restaurant number and then based on that we have to get it right. So I actually this should be this way. A parent record number, whoever is matching with this, I'm getting all the child records. This is the way which I wanted it. So send the restaurant number based on there all the child I have to get it. Uh, child in the sense, whoever is having um, this particular restaurant number as the value. So I'm just getting the customer records there. So parent dot account number or parent um, our account who is holding the restaurant number, I'm getting all the child records there. Child means they are customers basically. Hmm. So now the moment I got to hit the method, what it says is, hey, you need to have a page reference method for this. So where, where I'm just getting the list of accounts here. Um, yeah, that also works out. But simply if you call a method and then method is trying to fetch a value and then fetching a value, uh, it is expecting to have a um, search results like this. I'm just thinking that the simplest account we have been able to query here. Let's do one thing. Uh, we, instead of returning something, I would write this as uh, what? Only go out get accounts because if you if you're expecting a return, so they're expecting for a page reference. Mm. Let's go to our VF page and the fetch customer get accounts. Um, so next is, uh, I know that we are been hitting that method and we're getting the value, but actually we wanted to display the value also, like which record you have been queried, right? And, and their respective results we are expecting to show you. So that is also must. Um, so for that, what we'll do is page block table, page block information we got. And I will have one more uh, small context here, which says about um, page block. Within a page block, I'll take as page block table. So what is this? Apex colon page block table. So page block table is something like a table that we are trying to display the list of records. Uh, you queried a record, so we associate that to that record, we have get accounts, and this we have all the records values. So something that we would have a page block table here. Based on that, we have to print some records. So that is what I'm saying. So the moment you call this method, what happens, I'll tell you. It goes here, it calls this method, and in this method, we are trying to associate this list of records, and this list of records holding the all the values. Um, so that is what I want to display here. When you take a page block table, you need to specify 
what is the for loop uh, list of records variable in any uh, for loops you see so we always send the um, where it is Oh, this is a single turn record. Yeah, look at this. So any any for loop that you take it, you have a list here, right? So we need to have list to process the one or more records. Okay. So you get a bunch of records here, and you process with one single record, and you try to display this each and every record. Same way, it is like a for each loop only. So what you're trying to do here is, um, in this case, we try to first call the who is the list of records they are holding it. So that particular list of record who is holding is where you see values and then who is the value that we are holding here in which particular record here in the list of account object account list object is holding now list of records why because you have assigned so the moment that you call this method and in that particular method you are associating the list value to this and this value has already been exposed as a list of account and I can call this anytime because I have been used as get set, meaning itself what? So if I call this particular get means all the list of records which is stored in this material methods where after calling the get accounts, so this would have hold some value. How I have a restaurant get set input text you're passing here, it queried all the results while the method you're writing it after you assign. So this is holding the latest value here. So that is the agenda we have. So like this for loop, when you say compare this page block table with the for loop. So list of record, and then you move with the single record. So why we have various, so like as like a for loop, we have for each loop. For account A colon, account list like that we have, right? So like this, account list is this, and where is this? And then you something like write as A or ACC, whatever. So now we have to print them list of records you got and in each record you have to print them then by displaying the name so page block tape is something like displaying a table of values um like a column one after the other so yeah we can give them apex colon column so in the column just you try to display a value In this. And in this value, we are trying to display the each values like account dot name. That is something about account number, sorry, account name. And you can each give each and every value that which you wanted it here. So account dot account number. Building postal code, building city, and then building street. So, one more word if you wanted to query this parent account number, also you can do it. Account number and a parent account number. Is block table where account okay so what is that that we have invalid fill billing postal code for a subject um building postal code we have oh i am very much experimenting there okay perfect <clears throat> so so this is a preview that we have
you see this so i hit a, an account number so based on this i'm just getting all what the parent records so we got in, we're getting all this list of records that's getting yep. so we, we just hit a number and then we fetch and then we got all the results the same type of ui that we are expecting here um, in our display so the moment you hit your customers and you should show all the results of these customer records so this is specific to a restaurant you are hitting it and then you're getting all the their respective customers information so they are having helped by them paid but all they're having the parent number as the same so because parent number is matching that's the reason they have this value and independently they don't have individual their account number they are all they are customers so what it is we simply did we, we have simply taken a input text okay give the input value so when should you use input field is when you wanted to directly communicate with account related object fields so something like this when you want to use input field that you directly connecting with account dot name account dot account number something like that but in our case we wanted to send uh, just the string which you are typing here input text i've used it's absolutely a string that we are holding here i don't know what you want to give it it's you know, i'm not using an account dot something in all and we are moreover we are having custom controller here so what we do is we just take a string here and then moment to take a string we have to call quickly a method because this with the help of this strings you are trying to call this method now the moment you call this the get account you know so they are holding the records now uh, they are holding the action and those they are holding the values but instantly that if you have a page block table to display the value it will be good enough so that they will try to display the results to you because in get accounts we are matching all the values the whatever we queried we are assigning to the list report records and this is a list value which we have each records you process here first for loop goes here and then uh, it's a for loop of bulk records we have each record sends here and then we print all and then we go to the second record and then we print all and then third record so on it's just like a for loop on it is all displaying a table so page block table itself indicating like a do an iterations of all the record and then print it out of them for that the value we have columns here so the moment i give a column here this name account number we need not to give what it has been displaying there for example and i'm not giving any account name account number postal zip code i'm not giving this title at all look at this just the column name i've used account name account number postal code so by itself it found out okay you are uh, you know api name is this so they only found and then displaying on the top like how many types of like these iterators we have in sales if you say page block table data table like this we have and we have iterated results so uh, when you want to completely have the html snippets and then you want to write some logic there so then we write the um what do you say iterators all, all three are doing the same apex colon iterators Or well, this is going for Apex development code where you're trying to do the um, or repeat. Okay, sorry, iterator comes in aura. So the same other meaning is Apex will repeat. Sorry for that. So it's Apex will repeat. Okay. So this is something that we deal with the HTML structure elements. today i'm dealing with the salesforce related all the components if you see all i'm just using the salesforce um, tags if you see when i'm just using the repeat so that i'm absolutely i'm dealing with the html snippets directly so here when you wanted to have apex colon repeat and then you have some value to process but you are dealing directly with the html snippets like table row table data this style and then you wanted to print some results like this then using apex repeat as green same logic same thing we were doing process but you are not using the page block there i don't want this um, this type of ui i want my own custom html uh, table that will print the values so you have a so look at this there are so many <clears throat> there are so many html tables we have so it just like in ui any web page that you see this is a table with a selection box they have but look at this they are displaying the image items text and then whatever the values that you wanted to pass 
Yes, this is all achievable in the VF page also. Just like we are trying to have a table and then you need to have some HTML snippets to replicate this. Hmm. Or as you can see, a bootstrap um, HTML. Control A, bootstrap tables. So if you want to get something like this also, is it, it is possible in the uh, VF pages. See, they have used the scripts and to display this type of values, right? So let's try another example to use the same type of UI, but we're gonna display the bootstrap, uh, the UI stuff. So one more try that we're gonna do it. <clears throat> so anyway, we have done with the custom controller. So how do we display this table in more, you know, UI fancy things? Let's do that for VF stuff. And so we are here. In the bootstrap is here. So let me go. So, so where we have VF page, first customers VF page, right? So I would write completely a HTML oriented um, VF page. But I may use a few snippets of this Apex table, whatever we are doing, but we will try to use the majority of the, uh, how, uh, how do you see, how bootstrap would use it. Let's say I'm trying to use majority of HTML stuffs here. So let's do that. Um, okay. So first restaurant only. Or Okay, fetch restaurant with HTML, with HTML table, something like this input. So the conception, what we're trying to use it all the same here, uh, HTML table. Wait, um, okay, so now we wanted to get this right. So what I do is I wanted to, This and all this are the same way. So whatever we have a table, first let's copy this. First let's copy. I would tell you that 100% we can copy the same and then we can put it there. So just paste this off. We can first display the table. Firstly, uh, we don't have a doc type. Uh, let's take this doc type. If at all you want to mention the doc type, you have to mention doc type here. Um, so it's okay not to have doc type here, fine. So what, what is the problem here would be is, if you open a tag, they need to close them properly. For example, HTML, you're opening it here, it should close it. So they're very strict about opening and closing attacks. So meta, if they open, but didn't close it here. Okay, slash. Link rule, they open, but they're not having any slash. Script, yes, they open and close it. So otherwise, open class and yeah, they have closed it tags. Head open and closed. Language is fine. Okay, let's come. Why are they showing errors? Uh, the element data must be terminated by matching and tag. What is that? Yeah, we have matching and tag, no? Okay, we'll close as per the what they want. Oh, here. Sorry for this. So they open and they didn't close it here. So now it should be good. Look at this. So now I'm gonna preview this page. Look at this table, we have got it here. So if, if the style is not matching or something, we have an issue, look at this, the other areas that, that something has been background or had impact. So compare with this and compare with this because bootstrap UI that isn't applied. So even in the pages that been impacted with. So that's the reason what I say is, uh, so we'll turn off the background page. Show header false. I don't want it to have any headers there. And also I should say that um, standard style sheets, I am saying that false because I don't want any standard style should be applied there. Look at this, I got refreshed. Do you see this? So now the table is ready, flat table, let's table the code that we copied here, it's ready. 
but our expectation is something to have a proper input hmm? and I, I need to have a proper input where you have a text box and I int it so like, like that we have to try it out anyway table we got it and then it's fine now let's have form elements like in a bootstrap how do we have um, bootstrap forms where I try to have a text like this and I try to submit like this I need to have such UI Mm. Uh, this also looks good because yes, you give a name here, a number, and then you're getting a next invoke method itself as such. So this also looks good. I think this I will go with. Um, this this bootstrap inline form I'll go with. So in this inline form, what we have is division um, form go password. Okay, so we have this many, but we will just use simple one. Uh, I may not use this actions and all because you are having some logic to find and anyway every time when you use an HTML form so the form you the moment is submit where this action has to take carry forward that's the a classic web development any BF page or PF PHP page or any dot net page they all do the same stuff so you have to carry forward the logic there somewhere but we are directly having the controller already specified on the top like in every uh, page you, you specify the control at the top so you need not to worry about it specifying what the form action has to take care so we're not worrying about it so okay what is my agenda is um, i need to have a form to be displayed here okay a form to be displayed here that form is picking up the uh, input text something like this so let me copy this whole and give it here but i don't have any action specific here i don't want so form class see this is all you see style means they are all applying their own uh bootstrap css style there so you're not worry about it so input type so we we have to avoid this now rather we have to pass our input type text which we have sent here so a few params like this we have to use it so I don't want password here, so I'll throw this off. Mm. So button type submit. So what we'll do is we'll just give a end slash to this button is also fine. Let's see how the UI appears. Input type label oh, table also. We don't have a checkbox here. I don't want checkbox. Sorry. You see this email address submit and then you have a table so we are trying to get something like how we had uh, this guy restaurant feature guy. so play with this guy so how do you have the same way i wanted to have in the custom html table type okay we'll get them mm. so let's say you're trying to enter the data here and you're trying to display now a few things we have to match it up how I want a form because I need to submit the form. It should go real. So till now, this all not working as expected. Just like dummy contact we have. So form, another form. This all looks same. So if I want to use a style class, I need to apply the style class here. And then I can give this value there. That's it. So I would take that. I'm just converting that HTML form what we have to our uh, the normal Apex form style. So I'm throwing this out. So I would just give this apex colon from that matched. Hmm. So from style class we applied here. So next is a division group, let it be. So label, they are having email address here. Fine, but we have to really have a label as the star and number. And then your, your input type is number this but we have to have our own input type like this way. So we're using this input type as text and the class there is in this, but in for, if you want to use the convert the class, so something like this style, you have to use it. So it's a form control style. So meaning of this what so input text whatever that's gonna appear i would be 
uh, displaying as the same as text box or you know, design whatever we have. I don't want to change that UI because look at these boxes different and this box is different, right? So we want to get the same way. So I will throw this out. So for the label, this is for restaurant. So this there is label in this we are having it. Okay, we have a text box there. It's ready. And input type is submit. So I want to have a command button here. Uh, in order to have a command button, I think we can utilize the same that we had. Command button here. Again, the button class style type should be following the same. So I would do a simple um, So this normal style class type, then I would add style style class. So let's throw this out. So how can I write command is only if you have a form you can wrap, we can have a command buttons like this. Without a form, you cannot have a buttons. That is there in every technology that we use it. So you have a buttons, you should have a form wrapped with, or else the button won't work at all. somewhere we have unknown property restaurant number reference in first restaurant by table look at this we don't have any controller here so <laughs> you're writing restaurant there then it got a confusion there so we have to mention this controller there so we are doing a design there with of course but still where is the class that you are referencing here restaurant so give the class which you are referencing there in this class only we have a restaurants or other list all we are defined so without that it's useless right so i'm just saving that now perfect save so now this does an actual job so it it's a class and then we can see the results also if you want yes we can go to developer console logs delete them off and uh, so come back here Try to give the value and fetch customers. So let's go to our dev console. Yeah, it is hitting. See the HTML we have from that table we got it. Are we trying to get the value? Yeah. See, look at this debug. How do you got to do you see this debug? Because in the in the class we have written already logic where if you come here, if you hit here, you try to display these two types. One is at least and at least objects. So same thing, at least and at least object. Yeah, it is passing to our uh, controller and we're trying to print the value. All we're good. So now we have to use somewhere we have required for repeat, right? Uh, yeah, someone has to give an example. So repeat the same Apex call and repeat, we're going to use it. And the table, whatever the TD, they will make sure we're going to use the same there also. So let me use this Apex repeat. So, why did this example you brought is if at all you're using dealing with HTML stuff, then how do you are trying to print them? Same way to submit a form UI, all we saw already. How to submit a record and how to create it. Now we are trying to read a record. So reading a record with a normal Apex also is done. And again, custom completely on a bootstrap, something we're extracting and then HTML and putting and then we're dealing with them. So, so I'm saying this is your existing project can have the both the stuffs. So table data. So, so we don't want to display all this. So we can see. So restaurant, related customers. So we have this thread, TR, all this value we have. So now we need to give it manually. So like how we have an existing, uh, so the moment I paste this value and I fetch all this value we had, right? Account name that all that we have to give manually here. Um, so because it's an external stuff, so we have to give them. 
So what you're trying to print, you have to give their value. Account name. So I don't want to take this account number, but I would take uh, billing postal zip code. Billing city. So building street and then the next one would be so parent customer. What is it? Um simple here a number of it is. So this is the header that we have. So now to this each header we have to repeat the you know, repeat the value. So in that case, this TR we have no, this is the one we have to repeat it. So all these are the values that we're getting in there. So we will throw this. So you are having a five columns here. How can we have a three? See, you have five columns. So this it is. So you have five columns. So you can't have data in three uh, three columns like this one two three so what about the other two five columns three data is not matches right so then your ui would be disturbed so you also match the data the same so five headers and five datas which in each column that you have to have it so this is an ideal ideal way that we have to deal with so now what i'm trying to do is first what is expected is account name would be coming here right firstly we have to wrap this tr Every time the table row has to be repetitive. Why? Because here each and every row is a table row. This is header, this is a row, each row. And in each row we have data. So name, number, billing, postal, all this is a data. So it start with TH, TR. Under that we have data like this. All the values we have data. So that's our they have shown here. Um, first it start with header then with the each row and then each row under that we have data again the row would start they, they have data again row starts data so it's just like repetitive so i want to have a repetitive here so apex colon repeat under this repeat only all this your tr should go because each and every record we're trying to keep looping and right yeah so we need to have this so then for a page block table how did you use the same stuff here also Nothing much different. Uh, so you have taken act list and then where all the same. Okay. So we have this value now. So we got a TD. In this TD, we are trying to display the data. So while displaying the data, you can directly show up the value like this. Let's see how it comes in. So I know that I can use directly like this. And dot name. Let's save this. So let's go to so give a customer value here and try to fetch. Yeah, we're getting the value here, right? You see this the names are being deployed others are like dummy you want to see the name so the names are displaying there so you can just give the names here um, like how we did it in the other ways here i can name i can number second is billing postal code hmm. something like this so next is billing city. Billing street. And the last one is. Um, parent dot account number. So you the value here and search. So you should give all the values. So this is absolutely displaying in HTML table.
So now it doesn't look like, okay, these results, we are been displaying some the old VFP and all. So this we can get as much customized and then uh, it would look like something like a realistic website, how people are working on. We can get such UIs also here. Is getting? So this Apex form we have put outside, right? Now let's put it inside the container. It will look like, um, I'll put inside the container. I mean, overall you should be inside the container only then it looks very good. Then you can have a, a slash PR. Yeah, it's Look at this, now the, okay. This is this, now the layout has been learned very properly. So you have a restaurant there and then you can give it. So now about to the top, you can have an image also. So like say something like, we can bring up some images. Uh, McDonald's. Restaurant. Um, I know they have a website there. Okay, no problem. So we can go with the <clears throat> McDonald's. Oh. Hey, if you already have some logo been implemented in our um, logic, we can get them and display there. Of course, I think we should have a logo. Mm. So in lightning experience, I think we could see that. So let me check if we have any, um, so logos we have used here. Uh, control F, documents. Yeah, we have a logo there. Perfect. So this McDonald's logo will display there. Look at this. Um, display uh, image using VF page. So we have a tag for that. Um, someone trying to get the document to a page that you want to get. So you yeah, have there. These are simple things that you want to display image, you can give it, you can get there. Mm. So using static resources it is, but static resources we're not using, using a document. That's simple. Yeah, something you have to give the image you are like this, then it will display. Mm. Okay. So they are trying to construct the image you are here. Uh, okay. So this is a big control we have right? Hmm. So let dot file download is equal to this and then they're trying to get the document and then they're returning it. Something if you wanted to get an image, so we all deal with this. So what I do is let me make it very simple. Let's go to our um, static resource and we can upload the same logo. Static resource. So I would say logo. So probably I can choose a file and where the logos we kept.
I'm going to download here. No problem. So what we do is we go to the document record and we'll download this. So now I'm going back to the static resource and I wanted to upload that file. Yeah. So save this. So now we have to, via the static resources we can easily upload. I mean not to query them in the knowledge like a register. Display image initial force using static resource. That's a piece of So if you go to this guide. So they're saying referencing a static resource in Visual Force page. So you wanted to get simple uh, image, then this is the way that we have to deal with. Resource dot test image dot whatever the width that you wanted. Simply if you keep that is more than enough. If you have your um, static resource to include the JavaScript file and other stuff, we have to use this way. Um, to reference an archive uh, static resource, we have to use this resource zip file. If something like a file that you upload as a zip file, under that you have this uh, blue will stay PG, then we have to use this. So look at guys, we have uh, this rhyme and people, they don't give it, keep it here. So what they do is they all extract this JS and all put into a zip folder. And that zip folder, they will attach to a static resource. From a static resource, I want to reference in the VF page, then I have to follow this. If you are trying to include the scripts like this, we have resource means what? Static resource. And the name is this. If you're uploading a zip file, resource name dot zip file name, and under that, which folder path that you're using it, then we can get the images there. So that is what all background is talking about. So here they are trying to get a image, particular uh, values, they, whatever they want. So resource, zip file they're getting in, and then they're getting the variables there. And the variables, what they have, picture.gif they have. So like this. But we're going to use a very simple way. So let me copy this. We wanted to display the image there. That's it. So before from, I want to have this URL there. Also, oh, what is our resource name? So our resource name is logo. So logo. And I don't want to specify any size. Let it be the default what it is. We'll come back to that also, no problem. So I will give a break here. So. Look at this now. So it looks like no McDonald's website and then you have all the stuff here. So including logo, you're trying to search and you're getting the display. And this is the beauty vision that we're doing it. So just get that and we are displaying all the customer's information. So it doesn't look like something like um, if you have all the colors and combinations and now get a good UI framework. So it, it, it doesn't look like something that you're working with Salesforce, isn't it? Is there? Yeah. Did you get this? Yep. Now the same we can have some other link on the top. So a couple of buttons you can have. And then at the top you can have a logo. Just like how a website is looking like, you can have the same. And if you want to have next, next records to be printed, that also you can have it. So you have uh, no 10 records you got, right? You need to have paginations, yes, that also could be achieved. So standard page, uh, standard paginations is there. So uh, visual force page, standard, we call a standard set controller. So standard control we heard, standard set controller displays the, so some way if you see here, you'll get to know. So in this, what they're doing is they are trying to do a standard list. 
the advantage of this is you can go front and previous all that you can do. Look at this normal page block table we have. To the same, if you use um, previous next, I think they are explaining this. Add pagination to the list, yes. So previous next, they wanted to get it here. Yeah, look at this. So this is a pagination, they're getting it. Uh, where you say previous next and has next. So this all indicates what? You're trying to go between one record and another record, just like you're doing a pagination here. Contact list, you contact and page one of two, next, previous. Why? Because you can have one or more list, right? For the same restaurant number, you can have tens of or a bunch of customers also. So if you want to have pagination to move forth and back, so then you can have this. Is there any questions? So this you can have for a pagination list. You can you can just refer this. So I would copy there only. Uh, if you go to this page. So comment is this way. Like how many HTML we do it. So this link indicates for uh, page nation. So you can refer always. Is any questions? Not good. I think we have used VF controllers, pages, standard controller, custom controller, standard extension. Same with the extension for the customer also. Customer custom control also would be. We just expand on extending the methods. Nothing much different there. All the same. And um, what else? So Visual Force page, you apply the bootstrap, bootstrap templates, and then uh, we transform the whole thing and then we brought the how, in what particular place I can use uh, VF page in the snippets, but still the UI look like an HTML stuff only. For that few transformations we have did, the transformation is something that um, I am using the input command button or command button, but I'm actually adding the style class what the button is having it. Input text also, what that particular text box has still, I'm using that. So generally uh, for Apex class or uh, so HTML classes will have class as style. When you use uh, Apex <laughs> uh, visual, visual Force tags, just you have to add this style class where sales was under style class as equal to this class. So only there's a difference. Otherwise we're looking at this, we are just getting like as like normal HTML codes that we're seeing here. Still this can be, you know, beautified as much as the same way a website would look like we can get them. <laughs> But this edit is simple. So we have uh, now combined the uh, normal Apex snippet along with your HTML snippets. See, typically I've copied the HTML code and directly pasted it and we're working on that. So we have adopted the HTML stuff there. So if I want to have page block table, page block table has their own design. So they will bring up their design. So it was early like we have here. So they have this type of design. They can't change the design. Um, if at all you wanted to change the design maximum, what you do is you say that you apply style CSS for this. So let me show you that also. For existing page block table, do we don't have any other styles that we can apply? Yes, we can apply for the page block here also. Apex colon SLDS. So this indicates, so that um, SLDS indicates sales was lightning design system. So that lightning design systems we are applying for this. People are using Bootstrap, okay, fine. What if the people are uh, using still the classic window and then this type of UI? So they have to adopt with the SLDS. So what is SLDS? Again, I'll put it here. SLDS, oh, So Lightning Design System is a what? We say it as SLDS. So you see this UI, how it looks like. Now Salesforce gives few utility, you know, utilities. Okay, you want to have box? Okay. <laughs> For that, this is a snippet that we have. So look at this, how the box has been covered. Yeah, small box, big box. How, now we see the bootstrap content, right? So they also explain in such a way that even our bootstrap type of a custom code that we written. So we can utilize this always. Now, um, so any forms you have, so that will be easy enough to us. Now this See, look at this input label placeholder. Input label, how it appears. So, disable mandatory. Look at this. Same way, if you have any form, I could explain. Um, uh, 
one is models you can get the models like this also like how bootstrap has i think they have transformed the something like how all the existing bootstrap or some of the designs for the ui for web page or a simple page you have all these snippets they have ported so they called as lightning design system and yes of course what we're trying to copy here and already in the preview right the same way they are also directly showing the content to you so what is the content how it looks like so what is this you know, sample snippet for this this is how we have it right so in, even in the uh, we sorry w3 scroll also you have a code snippet and then you have a design sheet out to be displayed same they also display the same Now after applying the SLDS, maybe the UI would be literally changed here. Uh, no. uh, see the fetch customers button been changed here. Maybe because we applied this basic style there. So look at the table before that and now we have a different things, right? Is getting some changes we have here prior to SLDs, we have different and now we have different so the values the table appearance a little bit changed and look at the columns also got headers also got changed so this were out of the SLDs applying for the standard vf components so we have one more thing uh, SLDs for a specific to visual force page we have SLDs or visual first page even we can beautify the visual first design pages um, so this specifically for visual first page and then how do you deal with so page block table input field what do you want to customize so they have given some design sheets here so of course we have added this slds nothing much big thing we have and okay so they're saying that if you want to design your code then again you have tried some few html stuff where SLD is copyright and then same like how we have written this HTML stuff. Um, div class continue right now. They're saying that SLD is copy added here. <laughs> so it is more or less how uh, HTML codes we have. Same thing we are applying for VF codes here. See the context in um, trade. See our link there. So this is visual design along with uh, your lightning systems. How do you do it? Salesforce lightning design systems, they're saying about this. Hmm. Develop visual first pages, lightning experience, understand the importance of visual design. So you can all see this uh, batch where it helps you to figure out what, what actually you require between the lightning is a visual first page and lightning experience. How do you want it to match with? Okay, again, they all jump into auto state here. It's okay. You can just jump into visual first guide also you can see uh, a couple of other stuff also we can discuss on this team on developer guides where create update delete all that you do but our this all see like whatever we do all these contents all are page centric development um when i say page centric development of course you have to move from one page to another page all uh, clicks and points that we do with so you have to navigate from one page to another page if you don't want this complete set of ui things then of course we can move to the or our lwc as we require but uh, still visual force it's not so bad so like others uh, maybe sometime or also can fail but the the logic that which built for the visual force pages like this they are so strong which is built on the java platform i mean they are so stable but we can't guarantee onto the or at the side uh, when the too many things of data or the custom UI goes on it'll it'll hang over there but lwc is something like um, more positive on the side so they are working so good i think uh, so that's the reason people are asking to migrate to lwc and if still our project is run on VF code and then running absolutely fine, so they're okay. So people, are, if the customer are okay, then sales was also okay with that. Look at the sales was lightning experience we got way back from maybe six years. It's over now. Lightning experience, what we got it here. But still, we have a classic 
uh, UI is still present. <laughs> it's all about the comfort people how they have it. So they say that they're going to retire the classic UI, but they can't. So still we have Salesforce has not been able to convert that to classic to all full to the full fledged learning experience. So still we are able to navigate back to our um, classic window. This is a classic UI we have. So switch to learning experience they're saying here. Because some few things which is there in the learning experience and few things is left to us still in the classic. So unless you deeply look into all the links and then go around, only then we'll get to know. So where you have lightning experience and still out is moving back to the classic stuff. So likewise, our visual force developments also what have is done. So <laughs> LWC we write still in the code, but still in the past you have invested some amount onto the VF page development. Uh, so they would not okay with to again to transcend them to a new technology. And if it's working absolutely fine, they are okay with it. So that's the reason I just uh, given a little more um, descriptive information about the visual force page. What if tomorrow your project has and some bug has been came and then you have to work on it? Maybe this all will help you out. Um, so any question, please? No, good. You told you send me that um, sheet sheet or something, right? Yeah. So, so let me quickly check whether I have a right away and send it out. So I should see some items. Yeah, this is the 19 attachments you have. I think uh, this has enough information for all. Okay. So only for three have sent, and did I send for any? Kumar, do you have this or um, so who else? I don't know whether I'm just missing here. Okay, anyway, will again forward now, no big deal. So forward. gmurthy at gmail.com. Yeah, somewhere I've entered your two email IDs. That's going on. Okay, let me just, it, it will be there in my system. Yeah. And then I have Kumar. So Raj. So Raj, is it uh, Raj Patil RP 15? Yeah, that's correct. Kumar, I can't remember Kumar. Yeah, Prakash Kumar is there. I think all we have. So this is um, I mean, you have a couple of them in this, so it is not only about uh, Salesforce. Um, what is a basic development? It has each and everything, service cloud or so you know, Apex guide, how do you have visual force guide you have? So developers based research, we have anything on the records, automations. So I think a whole, a whole bunch, majority we have here. And these are, we are not getting right now. <laughs> so sometime back, I done all this and then we kept it. Maybe either they are revising it or uh, they wanted to get something advanced, but still we wanted to reference few things, right? So this is a good thing. For example, if you see lightning CRM, so they're explaining how to generate convert. I mean, nicely explained with the flow, how they just go lead creation and how the open happens and duplicates. All this they have explained very well. And keeping in this mind, when someone asks you interview, you can you can again pictureize this in your visualization and then you can answer it back to them. So that's a key advantage. Again, if you have a sales cloud also, service cloud also, they will explain very well. Support, manage, and how do you boost and how the channels we're getting the support tickets or the way case creation, how it happens. And then finally, how we solve the problems to these people. And what are the solutions that we have? Maybe this is a little older one in 2016, somewhere we have like a thing. Same, same thing is that now it's advanced with few more stuff you can think here. Now maybe we have a Einstein bot, we have uh, something like chat bot. So there early they had communities and then live each in the hand. So now we have uh, automatic systems where like bot, they're trying to resolve the issues. 
So one or two uh, technologies they would have been, I mean, features they would have added to this. Bradley, this is the root map of the basement. So just go through them. So if you have any questions, you can answer to me. You can ask to me, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just forwarding them. Is it okay with this? Good. Yeah. Okay. Got Perfect. It. So tomorrow we'll start with Aram. So one part three, which I have to cover on the test coverage. So that is something. Um, I'm just ready to writing on to the how you consume a service for that the service will complete. And for this Apex controller, whatever we written, I even I'll see today for today's Apex class, how do we try to cover the, what is say test classes for them also. So by doing that, I think we're good there. So, so make sure we are, our Apex class, always we need to have a test coverage and the test coverage should be meeting to hundred percentage. So then our logic is correct, our test scenario is correct. Any time it is ready for development and deploy. Okay, so we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you all. Yep. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks.